Hello, good evening, church. It's my honor and privilege that I can stand here again and sharing the word with you all this evening. Let me read Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. No refuge. In May 2008, Cyclone Nuggets that hit Myanmar killed with missing over 130,000, which resulted in great damage in excess of 2.5 million victims. The population of the southern uh, district of Yango, Eauri Division, we call uh, Eauri District, is 30 million. Especially the damage of this area was heavy, with 95% of housing being destroyed from statements the government of Myanmar. Many died because there were no cyclone shelter. So shelter is very important for our life. All of us face various kinds of problems and difficulties in this life since we live in the fallen world. No one can escape from that, which we often call the storm of life. And the good news is that God already knows that He will do when we face difficulties. What He will do, amen? He has planned to bring us victory. Just now the worship team sang a lot of victorious song. And I strongly believe that the Lord is encouraging all of us that He will bring you the victory. Hallelujah. He already brought you the victory on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. That we need to uh, lift up the banner of our salvation, the name of Jesus. In every day of our life, when we face trials, difficulties, opposition, loss of challenges, financial crisis, you know, relationship problems, health concerns, all kinds of difficulties in life that you are facing right now. Just lift up the name of the Lord, the banner of our salvation. Hallelujah. This is our victory. Amen. So, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, let us read from verse 1, 2, 3. All we need to do is take our position and remain in them until our breakthrough comes. Okay, let us read our Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1, 2, 3. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Menuhites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is En Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. You, we all know that the life of the people of God, Israel, in the Bible, we can read and study and learn from them. They are God's chosen people. Through Abraham, they are God's making covenant. Their covenant is eternal covenant. God called them holy nation, set apart for him. So, when they face a lot of problems and when they are attacked by their enemies, they understand that we are God's people. We are God's people. So they do not go to any other people, any other country or nation, but to God. How many things are coming against you right now? How many problems do you, do you have? The Bible clearly shows us that to do the same thing as the king 
Jehoshaphat did. Here in third verse, verse three, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquiry for of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. You you know when Jehoshaphat heard the ites were coming against him, three ites, okay, <laughs> not ice cream, <laughs> enemies. The first thing he did was fear, but then he did something else. He set himself to seek the Lord, determined to hear from God. He even proclaimed a fast throughout the land for very purpose. How did you respond when you face? Challenge, or what you, you know, hear the reports of the doctor. Your mom got cancer, or your son has leukemia. He will not live long. Sometimes, you know, we are so, so much afraid. When we heard about cancer or, you know, incurable diseases that we've learned from the medical field, okay? I'm not from medical field. I'm sorry. We learn from, you know, what we uh, understand about the health issue, incurable disease. I strongly believe that we all have the same experience, like King Jehoshaphat. You may God fear, and you you may not know what to do. Maybe you may God so fearful and panic. You cannot sit and you cannot stand. You know you don't know what to do. Sometimes people become so nervous and think and think and they walk here and there. You know, and some people when they got so stressed, they cook and they eat. And many times they eat, even they even they don't, you know, know that they are eating a lot. Panic because of fear. But he said he set himself to seek the face of God. He even announced to fast, to fast throughout the nation. It means that he turned his attention not to the problem, but to God. Hallelujah, to the Almighty God. Hallelujah, he take his refuge. He go into his refuge when the storm of life come against him. If you think about the problem, they will eat you up. The problem will become. Bigger and bigger. If you think enough time, but if you think about the Almighty God, He will become bigger and bigger. Hallelujah! So we need to choose. We need to decide to turn to God or to turn to the problem. And God's better plan is needed. So here, God's better plan is to combat fear by hearing from God. Let us read Romans ten seventeen. Romans ten seventeen teaches us faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of God, through the word about Christ. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. This this verse is not referring to the written word of God, but to the spoken word of God, which we call Rema word in Greek. In other words, when we hear God's words, faith fills our hearts and drives fear away. Until you hear the word of God, faith cannot. Go away. Still here, but when you hear 
the rhema word of God, the spoken word of God, the right word for the solution, the right word for your situation, then fear will leave you. Hallelujah. It will disappear when the word of God comes into your life. Amen. So let us read the word of God. Fill yourself with the word of God. Amen. In time of need, the written word we call logos in Greek turned into rhema, the spoken word for the right word for the situation. Amen. Amen. So Jehoshaphat knew that he needed to hear from God. And you and I have the same way, the same need. We also need to hear the word of God as Jehoshaphat heart from the Lord. Amen. So when you face the problems of life, do not run to the people, run to God. Amen. Because in Psalm 1 to 1 verses 1 and 2 says, Where does my help come from? My help come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Many a times we go to our friends, we go to the pastor. That's also good, but we need to be very wise. Because the one who can, the one who gives us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who dwells inside us, can give us peace in time of need. He is our helper. He is our counselor. He is our comforter. Hallelujah. He is with us all the time. So if, when the problems come, let us turn to God. Seek the face of God. Amen. Sometimes we feel that heaven is silent for us. We don't hear anything. Very silent. But in this time, I encourage you that what I did. I experienced one time that here I was not happy, sad or upset or something, you know, anger or something like that. But I don't want that feeling. I want to get rid of it. So I decided, ah, oh, I need to be in the presence of the Lord. So I joined the youth service downstairs here in, on Saturday, 1 p.m. So I was dancing together with them, and they were singing that, Satan, they, they, they've been drive away, go. Satan, you have been driven away, go. And we have the victory. They were dancing and seems like they have no problem at all. I am the one who have problem, you know. But I, even I was singing together with them. This upset sadness didn't go away. But I continue to sit in the youth meeting until the Lord, I hear from the Lord. Because I need to be in the presence of the Lord that I may receive the, the Rema word for my problem. Amen. So here, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. In verse 3. Something that we can do without others are vital and necessary. Joseph knew God's direction was vital. God's direction is vital for all of us. It is essential. Amen? Amen. Can you say amen? Because many a times people can give you good advice. But that cannot be God advice. We really need the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We, we need to uh, be led by the Holy Spirit. We need to receive the right word for our situation. Hallelujah. So, so Jehoshaphat, 
He pray. He prays. Hallelujah. He decided to praise the name of the Lord. I praise the name of the Lord in the time of sadness. I decided to praise the Lord, even my feeling is not right. I choose to praise the Lord. Here, King Jehoshaphat. Let us read verses five and six. Then Jehoshaphat. Stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, "Lord, the God of your ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you." He acknowledged who God is. How great are you, Lord? You are omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotent. You are powerful, God. You can do anything. You are mighty. You are my stronghold. You are my fortress. You are my shelter. You are my refuge. You are my counselor. Hallelujah! You are my advocate. You are my peace. You are my healer. You are my everything. Amen. Sometimes you may not feel like to praise the Lord because you are very down. But come and praise the Lord together with your brother and sister. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You need to be in the right place if you want to hear the right word from the Lord. Amen, Amen. If you want to set free. Come and celebrate Jesus, Amen, Hallelujah. So know that your God is greater than any problem you are facing right now. Since last two years, coronavirus, our nation political crisis, now economic crisis, and also famine and so many things, you know. It is like that. The ice, Ammonites, Moabites, ice, ice, ice. So many ice. They eat it up. They eat all our happiness. They try to destroy our uh, joy, the victory. The enemy is trying to steal our joy, our victory. So he sent his, you know, weapons, the eyes, the eyes, so many eyes, come and bite us. Here, your king Jehoshaphat, he faced mighty armies. Not only one soldier, three armies, mighty armies. He cannot fight back with his own strength. When he realized that, he decided. To seek God, Hallelujah! He made himself to stay in the shelter, the refuge, Hallelujah! God is our refuge, and you can praise the Lord. Sometimes, when you got sick. Pastor, come and pray for me. Pray for me, my. You you may send a lot of prayer requests to your friends or to prayer networks, whoever who can pray for you. You may send a lot of prayer requests, but I want to suggest you. You can worship the healer, Amen. The God Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Wherever you are, if you are sick on bed, worship. Jehovah Rapha, the healer will come and heal you. Amen, amen, hallelujah. If you need provision, worship the God Almighty, who can provide all your needs according to His riches and glory. Hallelujah. You just need to build an altar of worship. 
Worship the Almighty God, who is strong and mighty, who can give you lots of blessing. Amen. Who can bring you blessing, who can give you favor, who can open the doors for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And he continued his prayer. He poured out his heart before the Lord. Verses 7 through 11. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague, or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now hear a man from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sirah, whose territory you will not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt, so they turned away from them and did not destroy them. King Jehoshaphat said his prayer that he did not kill these people. I mean, his forefathers, they did not kill. When they came out from the land of Egypt. But we gracious to them, but they did not. In the book of Psalm, chapter 35, verses 12 and 12 through 14, the psalmist also faced the same situation. He also prayed like this. They reward me for, uh, they reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer would return to my own heart. I play, I pace about as though he were my friend or brother. I bow down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. Sometimes the one you helped a lord turn their back when you ask when you ask help from them. You gracious to them but they did not. Sometimes you may feel the same thing as the people of Israel, the King Jehoshaphat face. Let me read again ten through thirteen. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sirah, whose territory you will not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Sometimes you just need to say very simple, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, Lord. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. You know, when things come against you, you can stand before the Lord. You can pray unto Him. You can pour out your heart, what you feel, and how they treated me. Lord, do something. I need your intervention. As a result, the word of the Lord came upon one man. God always answer those who come and seek his face. Amen. Amen. Let us continue 14 through 17. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeol, 
The son of Metaniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly, he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the door in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Take up your position. This is the third thing that we need to do. Take up your position. You need to put yourself in the right position. That means that you are ready to praise the Lord. Amen. Ready, start. Start to praise the Lord. Be prepared and ready to worship the Almighty God. Stand firm. Believe God and His Word. So sometimes, as I mentioned, that sometimes the heaven is silent for us. We cannot hear. So we need our brethren and sisters. We need the, you know, the church. We need the presence of the Lord. Or we need someone who are close with God. Who can, you know, worship the Lord so easily when we are down. We are not always, you know, uh, top on the mountain. I don't need anyone. I am always fire for God. And I don't need, I, all, I can pray for you. And no one need to pray for me. We cannot say. Because sometimes the storm of life comes against us. We are just, you know, we don't know. We are merely survive sometimes. In this time, we need church. We need our brothers, our sisters. We need their helping hands. We need their prayers. We need their worshiping together with us. Amen? Amen. So, so as I was standing and worshiping the Almighty God in the youth service on that day, I continued my worship. I was sitting the back, uh, the back seat, the back seat, and the services continue. You know, they introduce one by one, sharing their testimony. Some came for a special number, and finally, the preacher came for sermons. I believe he is connected with the Holy Spirit. When he stood up here and when he started to speak, when he just started to speak, I received a revelation. Not from him, but from the Holy Spirit. I thought that my problem is I want to get rid of here. Sadness. Go, go, go. I, I, I don't want this feeling. Go. That is my struggle. But my concern and God's concern is very different. And the word of the Lord came to me. And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me. Prepare for the harvest. Prepare for the harvest. If you want to reach the children, prepare. It is like, you know, for the car parking for the children, okay? Packing for the children. Packing, how do I say that? Packing lot for the children. If you want to reach the businessman, prepare your message about, you know, how you can do business or how you can sow and reap. If you want to reach the orphans, welcome them. Make Make them a room. If you want to reach out the young people, make them a room for your church. And what is that? Set a watchman day and night, day and night. 
I got energized. We have prayer and meeting the first Sunday of every month. But the Lord wants us to pray not only day and night, day and night. Sad watchmen day and night, for day and night. Then I understood what the Lord wanted me to do is to think for the harvest, for the coming harvest. Amen? Amen? Because this will be the final. After that, we will be taken to be with the Lord. Amen? Rapture. Ready for the rapture. It means, it means very, very clear. Don't be conscious for anything. Try to reach out the people as much as you can. Pray day and night. Even not only you yourself pray. Sad, put a watchman who will pray day and night. So we have, so I, we made a 24 uh, 7 prayer, you know, I think the whole month, the whole church. We, we, we have, we invite our church member and let them sign in to pray set hours to take maybe one or two hours as, as they can, you know. So people came and joined in the 24-7 prayer. I, I still remember that. So what I want to say is, yeah, we face a lot of challenge and problem. It will be different from one another. Amen? But in this time, we really need to be seek the face of God and worship the Almighty God. Amen. And let God take over you. Amen. Amen. Let God take over you. So finally, something happened when you start to worship. Let us read Verses 21 through 23. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out as a head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord said, Ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Sometimes we try to fix the problem. But the Lord is saying today, this evening, don't fix the problem. Fix your eyes to God. Amen. Praise Him. Worship Him. Bow down before Him. Let magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us magnify the Lord. How great are you, Lord? How gracious are you, Lord? You are a mighty warrior. You are the king of glory, Lord of majesty. Great in power, great in wonder. He is the almighty God. Hallelujah. So I encourage all of you this evening. The enemy is trying to uh, raging war against us. As we are, since we are living in the end time, everything becomes like, you know, it is the introduction of the tribulation period. We feel, we feel introduction every day, <laughs> here and there, here and there, bomb, bomb blasting and somebody dying and blood sharing here, here and there. Bad news everywhere. But in this time, the Lord is telling to his church, stand firm. Start to praise him. Amen. Amen. I still remember when the cyclone 
Nagid Hills is then the cyclone destroyed the lives of many people. Over one one hundred and thirty thousand people died and two point as I mentioned two point five million people suffered after this. And that Sunday that Sunday, Cyclone Neck is 2nd of May, 2008. And that was on Friday and Saturday, you know. It was very strong cyclone. And almost 13 hours, 13 hours nonstop. The wind was so strong. I still remember it is, it is, it is like the, the, the train, you know. Ooh, it's like that. Very strong wind. Many trees falling down, many poles, posters. The wind destroyed, the cyclone destroyed. Many houses, many die. But on that Sunday, you know, the Lord gave me a song to sing. It is that God is great and His praise fills the earth, fills the heaven, cause we living for the glory of your name, glory of your name. And he, he told me to sing, you have turned my morning into dancing. You know, I was the one who was very active and vibrant on the stage on that day because all, all the people, all our congregation, they were so afraid. They, they you know, they, they may think that I merely survived last night. They came with very, you know, a sad heart and with a sorrowful face. No power, electricity, you know, broke. So many destructive. Many things were damaged. But in this, on that time, the Lord gave me to sing a song of praise, a song of celebration, a song of declaration, a song of victory. I sang and I danced like anything I remembered. So I learned something from that. Yes, He will turn our morning into dancing. But we need to start praise the Lord. We need to start singing. We need to worship Him. We need to concentrate on Him. Amen. Amen. So, church, this evening, I really want to encourage you. I don't know what you are facing right now, what your problem is, how big your problem is, how difficulties you are in, how circumstances it is worse. But in this time... Let us all stand up and worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Let us celebrate Jesus. Let us fix our eyes onto the Lord. He is our deliverer. He will save us. Amen. Hallelujah.